What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a class in Pygame to create buttons using the Python programming language. Okay, so I'm gonna go pretty quickly through the Pygame setup here. If you need a very rudimentary um, rudimentary in tutorial on Pygame. I do have a beginner series on the channel. You can check that out, but I'm just going to kind of assume, you know, at least some of how to install and set up the Pygame module. If you don't have it installed, make sure you run pip to get uh, get it installed, and then it's just pygame.init. We're going to choose a width and a height for our screen, and for this project, we're just going to do 500 by 500, and then you make this screen variable, and you do pygame.display dot set mode and just pass in the width and the height for your application few things you always want is an fps 60 is very standard and then you want to set up a timer pygame dot time dot clock to actually make the game run at that time and so then uh, if you're gonna have any text which obviously if we're doing buttons we're gonna have text you want to set up a font in the very beginning as well so pygame dot font dot font and we're just gonna use free sans bold dot ttf because that's a font that comes with almost any install of Python and then we're gonna make it size 18 and then one more thing we'll do in the beginning here we'll do pygame dot display and just set the caption to be equal to buttons so that we know this is an app for buttons okay now we're gonna just set up what's i always call the main game loop grab a variable i usually call it run or running or active um and then just set up a while loop that's wall run and a few things you're always going to do screen dot fill with whatever color you want the background to be i will just fill it with white and then do timer dot tick at your designated frame rate. And so that's going to control um, just kind of the core running of the game, making the background white. And then you want to have a way to get out of the while loop because right now it's an infinite while loop. So we say for event in pygame dot event dot get like that. It gets every event happening on your computer and your keyboard and your mouse and everything. And we say if event dot type is equal to pygame dot quit just like that. Then we set run equal to false. And then outside of that for loop, we wanna do pygame.display.flip, which kind of actually gets everything onto the screen. And then pygame.quit in the very end is how you exit the loop. So if you run this, you now get this plain 500 by 500 application that's just all white. And um, you can see there's nothing on it, but uh, it says buttons at the top and that looks good. So let's get into the actual reason that we're here, which is a button class, okay? So um, say you wanted to create a button in here and say, you know, my button equals this button class. And we know we have to give it some stuff so that we can fully define a button, but we don't know what. Let's go ahead and define a class. This is something I don't do in that much, many of my tutorials, but it is a super useful Python thing to know. So a class is something you want to set up anytime you're going to have a lot of objects with similar characteristics and properties that you could do all in one. It's actually one of my biggest regrets on this channel is one of my popular videos is how to create like an idle clicker app. And I didn't just make each task a class and I should have. So maybe in the future I'll do that. But you know, a button is going to have tons of stuff in common with its partners. It's going to have basic size, basic shape. It's going to, you know, have an X and Y position and, and approximate width and height, and then text and behavior when it gets clicked all in common. So if we're going to have an app with multiple buttons, we want to create a class for it. And Pygame doesn't have like a built in button class, like a T Kinter or Kivi's uh, graphical user interface packages do have. So it's not a bad idea to set one up, and if you're making a lot of Pygame games, then you can create a button class that you bring with you to all your different games, and this way you don't have to do this every program. But so, start by typing class, and then the name of your class with a capital first letter. And if this is too confusing, you could say, like, class is... Um, my button like that and this is called snake case where the first letter of every word is capital but you don't use underscores or spaces um it's very common to python but uh just i'm just gonna call it button and move on 
Um, so you want to always start with this def in it. This is your initialization function. And basically it's going to take what we give the class and we're going to take all the variables passed in and assign them to self dot variables. So internal variables we can use inside this class for our own purposes. Let's think about what would have to get handed to a button for us to understand like how to draw it and what it does. So we would wanna know the text that it should say on the button, the X position, the Y position, and then uh, we wanna know whether or not the button has been enabled. So this is a very common thing for buttons. Sometimes when you're doing certain operations, you shouldn't be able to click on a button. That means the button should be disabled. So we're gonna um, have a variable that says whether or not it's enabled. And inside the init function, we're just gonna do this. We're gonna say self.text is equal to text. Self.xpause is equal to xpause. And the reason for that is you wanna take every variable that you're given and assign it to a self variable. So if you use this in another function inside your class, you can just reference that self dot whatever because it gets defined in the init function. So self dot x pause, self dot y pause is equal to y pause, and self dot enabled is equal to enabled, okay? And we're gonna leave the init function there, but we're gonna do one thing that you're always gonna wanna do with your button, because why would you define a button if you didn't want it to get drawn? So we would say define draw. And if you make a function inside a class, it's always going to auto populate this first argument as self. You want that, leave that there. Um, if there's something that gets passed in additionally that isn't in the init function, you can add extra parameters here. So like, let's say you were gonna pass in color. Um, you could do that here as well. But uh, I recommend trying with your buttons to pass everything in initially in the class if you can. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, set up what we would want the draw to be. And I think um, typically we would want to kind of buttons or rectangles. So let's just think of the button rectangle as being a pygame.rect.rect .rect, with a capital R for that second rect. And if you're gonna define a rectangle like this, you just need to give it two sets of tuples. So two sets of basically an x and y starting coordinate and then a width and a height and for the x and y starting coordinate it's going to be the self dot x pause and self dot y pause that we pass in when we define the button now here's where you could make size something that gets passed in here as well so you could have like a width and a height parameter in here. I think it'll just look good to make our buttons a standard size. So I'm just going to hard code these and say all of our buttons are going to be, um, you know, 150 pixels wide, 25 pixels high. You don't have to follow my standard here. If that size, if you'd rather make it something you could define button to button, go ahead, make these variables just like these are variables. That's not how I'm choosing to do it. Okay, so that's our button rectangle, and it would be really easy to just start by saying pygame.draw.rect, put this on the screen, let's make it gray, and then, whoop, I didn't do an open parenthesis here, put this on the screen, make it gray for a rect argument, so this third uh, character inside of your function is looking for a rectangle, we just defined a rectangle. Now let's say we want it to be solid, but we want it to be a rounded rectangle with uh, corners rounded off with a radius of five. And then let's say we wanna put text on the screen. So here actually above we define button rect, let's define button text as font.render. And then this we want to be, the text is going to be self.text just like that. And then you have to give two more arguments to fully define a string of text for Python. You need to give it like anti-alias, which is always true, I think. Um, I always just put true there. I don't honestly know what happens if you put false. And then uh, color, we're just gonna have it be black. And so after we draw the rectangle, order is important here, because if you draw the text before you draw the rectangle, the rectangle is going to be over the text. You won't be able to read it. But text is different than a, a rectangle, it's not pygame.draw, it's screen.blit. And then you give it the name of what you're blitting, which is like block transfer onto the screen. And so it's screen.blit button text, 
Um, and then we need to give it an X and Y position. So that'll be, you know, again, self dot X pause, self dot Y pause. But an important thing to know about text is uh, you want it inside the rectangle. So it's not a bad idea to just scoot it to the right and down a little bit so it doesn't touch the edges of your rectangles. Um, and then this is kind of just a personal preference thing, but uh, I think that borders look pretty good on buttons. So like we did the that rectangle as gray. If we do the exact same rectangle as black um, and then we just give it an edge width of two, now we're gonna have this like uh, not solid rectangle uh, in black bordering the button. So this looks pretty good. Um, and I think what we wanna do is say when we initialize the button, let's just call the uh, self.draw function. So no matter what, when we create a button, let's do self.draw just like that. And let's make one of these buttons. So let's say my button is gonna be our button class and the text we want it to say is click me like that. And then let's put it at 1010. So that'll be in the top of the top of the screen. And we'll just say true for is it enabled. So to start, we're saying, okay, our button is enabled. Now let's go ahead and run this. And you can see, we don't even have to tell it to draw or anything like that. Um, we just can see that we get a button in the top left. Now we haven't told it to do anything if it gets clicked. Um, so we're gonna do that next, but just to show you how versatile a class is, let's go ahead and make three of these. So, whoop, control V and control V and we'll call this my button two, my button three and this one will be you know click me two and this one will be click me three and let's put them all on the screen and uh, we'll just put them you know 30 apart or so okay so now bam we have three buttons nothing happens uh, if we click any of them because we haven't put that in yet but just by setting this up as a class we get uh, this really versatile function that draws them for us and all we have to do is give them X and Y coordinates uh, So now let's start actually um, making this a bit smarter. So first off, let's do if it's clicked um, So let's make a function called uh, check click so def check Click okay, and this is gonna be take the buttons position and check if it gets clicked and to do this, we're gonna take the mouse position, which is really easy. There's a Pygame built-in um, function called pygame.mouse.getPause, and it returns the X and Y coordinate of your mouse as a tuple. So pygame.mouse.getPosition, and then left click is equal to pygame.mouse.getPressed, which is a built-in function that gets all three of the um, mouse buttons and whether or not they're currently clicked. But we just wanna check the left one. So we check the very first index, which is the zero index of this list of buttons that got pressed. And then the button rectangle, button rect is equal to, and here's where uh, you could probably say self.rect is equal to button rect, but there's kind of an issue with that. You're not, you don't want to define these self dot whatever's outside of the init class. Um, so we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna redefine the rectangle. So button rect is equal to this rectangle, but the reason we want to know the rectangle of the button is uh, because what we wanna do is check if the button, if the left click button of the mouse is pressed and button rect dot collide point with the mouse position then we're gonna basically return that it was clicked so um, if the left mouse button is clicked and the mouse position is somewhere over this button and the b button is enabled so this is why we put that in there because if you need to disable the ability to press a button just disable the enabled functionality but if it's enabled and if you click on it, then we want to return true. Now, if any of those conditions aren't true, we want to return false. So else return false, all right? Now, what we could do is we could do it this way. We could say my button three dot check click and let's just print that onto our terminal. Okay, so we're gonna print check if my button three is clicked. So now, 
if I click anywhere in the screen, we're getting false down the terminal. Let me turn this uh, bigger and hopefully that looks better. So now if I click on three, we start getting true. So we know our program is detecting whether or not we're clicking on a button, but we aren't showing that anyway. So what we want to do is uh, we want to change our draw function to where the color of this rectangle is going to be based on whether or not it's being clicked. So uh, we'll do it this way. We'll say if check clicked, self dot check click, then we'll just uh, draw it as dark gray, okay? But then we'll say else, and then we'll draw it as light gray. So that should be a big enough difference that we can see it pretty easily when it's clicked. Um, and this should be all we have to do to get it to change state when it's clicked. So let's click on three. Yep, two and one. So all of a sudden you can see, I hope you can see um, the color difference when you click on a button. And so we're gonna stop printing it out in the terminal. We don't need that anymore. Where did I put that? Uh, where's that print statement, you guys? Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, okay, so now we are using this check click function, but what we wanna do first is say if self dot enabled. Um, so basically, we want to draw a totally different rectangle um, if self dot enabled is false. Um, and so we'll come down here and say else, and then we'll take this same rectangle, but what we're actually going to do is draw a solid black rectangle um, if it is uh, brain fart. If it is disabled, we're just going to make it black. So that way uh, you won't be able to tell if anything happens when you're clicking on it. So I'll make button two false so you can see what it looks like if a button's disabled. So there's nothing going on here. It doesn't look any different when you click it or anything, but I can still click one and three. All right. And now it's hopefully pretty easy um, and pretty obvious to see that uh, you can use that check clicked function in the outside world to perform real operations. And so what I'll do is um, I will say, let's see, um, let's make the uh, status of button one, um, button one enabled let's make this a variable okay so button one enabled I'm gonna put it up in the top and initially we'll call it true alright um, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a new loop that says uh, if mouse pygame dot mouse dot get pressed zero um, then and new press equals false. So this is important um, because we only want this code to operate once per mouse press. So we need to make a new variable called new press that's basically checking, is this the did we just press this or not? So initially it'll be true and actually that's what we want and new press is equal to true. Um, then we are going to basically check all of the buttons clicks and then set new press equal to false. And then the only thing that'll set new press equal to true again is if pygame.getPressed is not true. So if, <laughs> hang on, let me get this typed and then I'll explain it. What we're doing right here and not new press then we want new press equal to true. So this little four lines of code that we wrote here is basically saying if the left button is pressed and we haven't already clicked something, set this equal to false, but then we'll check and see if all the buttons were clicked. But if the uh, left put button is released and it's not currently new press, so this is false because we've already clicked, set it back equal to true. And this new press is just how we're going to control whether or not we should check the buttons because we only want to check them once per time the mouse is clicked. Since this code is ever is only going to execute once, we will use this to check our one-off button scenarios. So we will say if my button three dot check click 
So this is checking to see if we're clicking on the button when we click down on the mouse. And so if it is clicked, then what we'll do is we'll say if button one enabled, then button one enabled equals false. And then else button one enabled can equal true. And so basically what we're doing here, it might seem goofy, but we're going to enable or disable button one based on if we're clicking on button three. So let's go ahead and run this just to make sure we did that right. So if I click three, you can see it's enabling and disabling um, button one, but if I hold it down, it still only does its code once. So um, basically that shows how to create a toggle button. Now let's show how to create a momentary button. So you come out of this like new press kind of complicated logic that I said, and we'll just say if my button to dot check clicked, then we'll say um, button text equals font dot render and we will say button two ha is being pressed and that'll be the text we'll say true and we'll make it black and we'll put it on the screen here so oop, true there we go and we will say screen dot blit our button text um, and then just X and Y coordinates, let's just put 200, 200, that's around the middle of the screen, I think, maybe 100, 200 looks better. But now I'll show you that's a momentary button. So if I'm clicking me too, button two is being pressed. That happens while the button is being pressed, but as soon as I let go of it, it's gone, and it's momentary, so I have to hold the button down. Whereas click me three is a toggle button, so it's like only one thing happens um, per click. And so those are the two different ways that you can use the button from the same class. Uh, and so I'm probably going to stop here because I know this video is getting kind of long for a basic concept tutorial, but I hope this shows how to set up a class, how to create buttons in Python using the Pygame graphical user interface, and a few different ways that you can use those buttons to do different things in your games. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. I hope I didn't miss anything major that you were hoping to get answered. If you do have further questions, just let me know about it in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. Thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.